I plan to tell you about some of the heroes and the stories and their scientific discoveries and how the stories tend to reveal lesser known works of astronomers that the heroes used to make their famous discoveries. Isaac Newton wrote to his nemesis Robert Hooke If I have seen further it is by standing on the shoulder of giants which means if Newton had been able to discover more about the universe than others then it was because he was working in the light of discoveries made by fellow scientists either in his own time or earlier. Not was this only a humble brag but it was also a dig at the fact that Robert Hooke was very short they really didn't like each other. But it was also an acknowledgement of the people who had come before Newton, whose works he had used to make his famous discoveries. And as we will find, this is the tale throughout the history of discoveries in astronomy. This week I'd just like to summarise what is to come in the next few weeks, and I hope along the way we will all learn something new. From the beginning, mankind looked to the heavens, with curiosity and wondered our place in the scheme of things. This makes astronomy one of the oldest sciences. Our curiosity has helped us make great discoveries about the universe and our place in it, like we are not centre of creation as first thought, but our planet revolves around the sun. Also that the moon and the planets are other places to explore. Stars are brilliant balls of luminous gas which provide most of the elements we see in the universe today. These same stars have a birth, grow old and die. There are several million of them in our own galaxy alone and to study them we require instruments and telescopes that can detect energy along the entire magnetic spectrum. We have also found things that baffle us and that stretch our imaginations to the limit. We have only just begun unravelling the mysteries of black holes, dark matter and dark energy and are now in the position to understand the universe's beginning and how it may end. Every discovery tells a compelling story and has expanded our knowledge of the workings of the cosmos. And, as with most good stories tend to do, our accounts of these discoveries reveals the heroes behind them. Not the heroes of epic tales or comic books, performing feats of immense strength, bravery or saving mankind and earth from annihilation while dressed in tight costumes. Everyday heroes are people who spend their time trying to help others in distress or injured. People who try to improve the environment for everyone. When we think of heroes of astronomy we tend to think of heroes of classical literature and of science, generally lone men who persevere against the odds in pursuit of a definite goal, people like Edwin Hubble, Albert Einstein and Carl Sagan. They asked, how did we get here, how does the universe work and are we alone? These men captivate our imaginations. But the stories of these men and their achievements are far more complex than at first appears. Take Edwin Hubble. Most of us know his name due to the Hubble Space Telescope, but he did not have any part in its conception or building. Hubble is most famous for discovering that our universe is expanding, but he could not have achieved this without his groundbreaking discovery that galaxies existed outside our own galaxy the Milky Way, something he could not have done without the pioneering work of a lesser known hero, Henrietta Swan Levitt. Also his work was done using one of the best telescopes built by telescope maker and astronomer George Ellery Hale. Other astronomers include Investo Slipher, also observed signs of an expanding universe Hubble's work also coincided with similar work done by Belgian priest and physicist Georges Lemaitre. So, full credit for the discovery of an expanding universe is hotly debated to this day. Was it Hubble, Slipher or Lemaitre? As for the space telescope that bears Hubble's name, it was originally imagined by Lehman Splitzer, 
and brought about by Nancy Roman and repaired by astronauts in lower of orbit aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavour and is still working today. In short, Hubble did make great contributions to astronomy. The telling of his story has evolved to include the amazing feats of a wide variety of other lesser-known heroes. Astronomical discoveries have been made with the advancement of telescopes, the astronomer's invaluable tool. From Galileo, who first turned a telescope to the night sky and recorded what he saw, to George Ellery Hale, who developed new methods to improve and build bigger telescopes, and finally to the giant telescopes we use today. As telescopes got bigger and better, the more discoveries were and are made. Most of the knowledge we know today about the stars and how they work began with the groundbreaking work of a group of women astronomers known as the Harvard Computers. Women employed by the Harvard College Observatory to process and analyse the cutting-edge astronomical data of the era. Women like Annie Jump Cannon, Wilhelmina Fleming and Cecilia Payne Kapochkin who made some of the most foundational discoveries about the stars in the history of astronomy. They developed methods of classifying stars that are still used today. They discovered that stars are mainly composed of hydrogen and helium, and they also broke down barriers for women in astronomy. One Harvard computer, Henrietta Swan Levitt's discoveries, have ramifications that are still shaping astronomy today. She discovered Cepheid variables, stars whose rate of pulsation is directly correlated to how bright the star appears. may seem a small thing, but Cepheid variables wound up drastically altering our picture of the universe. By measuring these stars' pulsation rates and determining how bright they should be compared to how bright they appeared, Levitt had given us a new and powerful tool for measuring the distances to far away objects, and her work directly led to Edwin Hubble's discovery of galaxies beyond our own. Hubble's most indelible contribution to astronomy was a famous and deceptively simple equation describing the expansion of our universe. However, as with many details of our universe, the discovery isn't as simple as it seems. We will learn about the Belgian priest and the astronomer Georges Lemaitrier, who had published a similar result several years earlier, as well as other physicists and astronomers who had speculated about an expanding universe, based on implication of Einstein's general theory of relativity, that was still being explored. Hubble's famous equation is a source of continued debate as teams of astronomers engage in a century-long mission to determine the exact value of this equation's constant, the so-called Hubble constant, and to work to reconcile different observations into a single answer that can best explain the expansion of the universe. Hubble's legacy also lives on in the space telescope that bears his name. The heroes of the Hubble Space Telescope range from astronomers who dreamed of space telescopes long before humankind even launched its first satellite, to the NASA personnel who tackled daunting scientific and bureaucratic hurdles to make the telescope a reality, to the astronomers who opened and sharpened the telescope's eyes, to the teams of scientists today that have kept the telescope running and making remarkable discoveries for over 30 years. It is also important to remember that astronomy involves much more than the light we can detect with our eyes. What we call visible light occupies just a tiny fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum, and fully understanding the universe requires the ability to detect energy across the entire spectrum to get a complete picture of the cosmos. Hopefully we'll learn how over in the radio regime at wavelengths far too long and energies far too low to be detected with our eyes, 
Physicist Karl Jansky made a groundbreaking discovery in 1932 when he became the first person to detect radio waves from space while working at Bell Labs. A few years later, Grote Reber created the first dedicated radio telescope, an antenna specifically designed to detect radio waves from the sky. Since then, the field of radio astronomy has grown exponentially, we have radio astronomy to thank for one of the most exciting discoveries when in 2019 astronomers synchronized radio telescopes across the entire planet to take the first ever picture of a black hole. Another radio telescope at Bauer Labs also made an incredible, if accidental, discovery in 1964. It detected the cosmic microwave background, the faint leftover remnant of the Big Bang, observable as a quiet but persistent hiss in the background of the telescope's data. This radio signal from the birth of the universe led to a Nobel Prize for its discoverers Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson. Today, several dedicated space telescopes have been launched to study the cosmic microwave background, and teams of scientists are focused on collecting data from the universe's earliest moments in the hopes of explaining how space and time have evolved to what we have today. Decades after Hubble's discoveries of galaxies beyond our own, and just three years after the discovery of the cosmic microwave background marked a shift in how we studied the nature of our universe. An astronomer named Vera Rubin uncovered strange inconsistencies in how the stars in nearby galaxies moved. We will see how years of careful observations revealed these galaxies appeared to contain huge amounts of invisible mass, what we now call dark matter. The existence of dark matter fundamentally changed our entire cosmological model and spawned an entire new field within astronomy, focused on studying dark matter in the hopes of explaining what exactly it is and how it affects our universe. These questions tie back into one of the most fundamental questions that astronomers find ourselves asking. How did the universe begin? We think of the Big Bang as the beginning of the universe, but this story itself, from its name to its model of how the cosmos came to be, has its own interest in beginnings. Big Bang cosmology is now widely accepted as the scientific model for where our universe came from, but it also poses several ongoing mysteries. From what exactly happened in the earliest fractions of a second after the universe began, to the mysterious force known as dark energy that appears to be powering its continued expansion. Finally, where does the Big Bang ultimately leave us? Astronomers are still debating how the universe has evolved, the existence of parallel universes, and how our universe might end. In the second part of our discussion, we'll focus on Albert Einstein. His very name is synonymous with genius and discovery, and in this section of the course we'll consider some of the most mind-bending concepts in astronomy, gravity, time, black holes, and the extremes of light and energy that challenge our understanding of how our own galaxy works. It's tempting to think of astronomers as being concerned only with far-reaching challenges like how the early universe began the mysteries of deep space, and the physics of stars and galaxies many millions of light years away from our own home here on Earth. However, for the astronomers who study these questions, our scientific pursuits are inextricably tied to the people who study them. Many astronomers have, alongside their groundbreaking research in space, dedicated their time and energy to fighting discrimination and advocating for equal opportunities in astronomy and the broader fields of science. Another hero of astronomy is Oscar de Duhold, who became one of only a handful of human beings in history to make an exceptionally rare astronomical discovery. 
In 1987, Oscar, a telescope operator in Chile, became the only living person to discover a supernova with the naked eye. The distinction is a rare one, shared with Johannes Kepler in 1604 and Tycho Brahe in 1572 and Arabic, Chinese and indigenous North American astronomers observing the heavens in the 1050s. These discoveries made crucial contributions to our understanding of what supernova are, how we work and how we study them today. Supernovae are incredible energetic events produced in the final moments of a dying star's life, events that emit energy across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, a fact of physics that can be easy to forget for those of us used to seeing the world through the narrow range of wavelengths detectable by the human eye. In fact, dying stars and many other objects in space emit radiation in the high energy regime of the electromagnetic spectrum, at energies so high and wavelengths so tiny that we need to invent new techniques or even leave Earth entirely in order to study them. These wavelengths include X-rays and ultraviolet light. Most of us think of X-rays as medical tools used to study our bones, and of ultraviolet light as the pesky thing that causes sunburns. In reality, observing X-ray and ultraviolet light from space can offer a fascinating window into things like newborn stars, enormous black holes and even the workings of our own sun. Several pioneers of astronomy led the field in how to study this light, a particular challenge since it can only be detected from space. Years before the Hubble Space Telescope launched, visionaries like George Carruthers, Ricardo Giococcani, and Arthur B. C. Walker Jr. developed the cameras, technology and techniques required to capture this invaluable data from the cosmos. At the other end of the spectrum, radio telescopes also offered us the opportunity to uncover strange and exotic physics in space. In 1967, an astronomer named Jocelyn Bell discovered a strange signal perfectly regular pulses of radio emissions, in data from a radio telescope in Cambridge, England. Her discovery proved to be the very first observations of something called a neutron star, the tiny and dense remnant left behind by the supernova death of a massive star. Neutron stars and their higher mass cousins, black holes, are some of the most extreme objects in the universe and the astronomers who have studied them over the years have transformed our understanding of how stars, gravity, space and time work. Published in 1915, after eight years of work, Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity connected the properties of gravity, space and time. In the years that followed, it fell to Einstein's fellow astrophysicists to seek out observational proof of this theory. In 1919, the astronomer Arthur Eddington found the first proof that Einstein's theory was correct during a solar eclipse expedition. Fifty-five years later, after Jocelyn Bell's groundbreaking discovery of neutron stars, Russell Hulse and Joseph Taylor found more evidence for Einstein's general theory of relativity by closely observing a pair of neutron stars as they orbited one another. Combined, these observations have revolutionised our understanding of the fabric of our universe and the mysteries of gravity. One long-standing mystery of gravity was the phenomenon of gravitational waves. Predicted by Einstein's theories in a mathematical result that drew scepticism even from Einstein himself. Gravitational waves are minuscule ripples in the fabric of space-time caused by the collisions of enormous black holes, but tinier than the width of a proton when they arrive at Earth. Gravitational waves were first successfully detected in 2015, the result of decades of effort by thousands of researchers to build and operate the most sensitive observatories on the planet. 
This discovery came about thanks to a combination of cutting-edge physics, exquisitely precise engineering and the management of an immense team of thousands of scientists. Today, gravitational wave astronomy is an exhilarating new subfield propelled by this same large team of scientific heroes. With phenomena like gravitational waves, supernovae and other transient events happening all over the cosmos, it's become clear that astronomers need to keep a constant watchful eye, or many large eyes, on the sky. However, capturing a brief flash of a supernova, or the motion of a tiny comet or asteroid across the immensity of the night sky is no small task. Since the 1960s, teams of innovative astronomers have taken on the Herculean job of surveying the entire night sky, using a diverse array of telescopes and tools to painstakingly catalogue everything that we can see. Early efforts included surveys of the northern sky using endless stacks of photographic plates and ongoing observations by large networks of amateur astronomers, willing to dedicate their backyard observatories to long and detailed studies of anything that might be changing in the night sky. Today teams have launched space telescopes designed to observe every star in the entire Milky Way galaxy and a groundbreaking new telescope in the southern hemisphere that will soon begin a 10 year long campaign to continuously photograph the entire sky every few nights. With so many large and heroic teams conducting all sky surveys and achieving marvels of engineering to study gravitational waves and put telescopes into space, it can be easy to imagine that the whole planet shares this dedication to astronomy research. That said, the big question of the universe can easily start to seem quite remote and small when faced with the many challenges of day-to-day -day life here on Earth. More than any other science, communicating the discoveries, importance and the wonder of the astronomy to the rest of the world is a crucial role for astronomers if we hope to continue studying the cosmos. Carl Sagan was the first and the most famous astronomy ambassador of the modern age and many other heroic efforts have been made to advocate for astronomy research and increase public enthusiasm for science. Sagan was also a specialist in studying our own solar system and imagining solar systems beyond our own. In this final section of our talks, we'll look at the science of our own cosmic backyard and learn about the heroes who are studying our potential neighbours in the universe. One clear and immediate connection between the mysteries of space and life on Earth are asteroids and comets, the small citizens of, of our own solar system that might one day come close, perhaps even a bit too close, to our home. Finding and studying nearby objects like these is a crucial part of understanding our solar system and the fate and history of our planet. Astronomers like Jean and Caroline Shoemaker built up a long and prolific history of discovering and studying comets and asteroids, along with their potential impacts. One dramatic example was observed by astronomers and stargazers all over the world in 1994, when Comet Schumacher-Levy 9 struck Jupiter. More recently, large survey and robotic campaigns have taken up the mantle, with teams of people monitoring the sky, searching for asteroids and comets throughout the solar system, and learning more about these fascinating little members of our solar system along the way. It's hard to talk about small solar system citizens without also thinking of Pluto, our little former knife planet, and wondering what exactly happened to it. The astronomical heroes, or maybe anti-heroes, behind Pluto's journey from discovery to demotion span more than 70 years. In 1930, Clyde Tombay discovered Pluto and classified it as the ninth planet in our solar system. In 1960, Julio Fernandez predicted that an enormous and crowded belt of smaller rocky objects should surround the outside of our solar system. J. 
just at and beyond Pluto's orbit. In 1992, David Jewett and Jan Liu discovered the first observational evidence of this belt. The research that followed ultimately led to Pluto's demotion from planet status in 2006, along with a significantly expanded picture of our solar system and its outer boundaries. At the heart of our solar system, our own Sun has also been in an immense font of information about astronomy and the inner physics of stars. Solar physicists have used enormous tanks of liquid to detect neutrinos, tiny subatomic particles that emerge from the Sun's core and act as minuscule ambassadors from the immensely hot and dense heart of a star. Astronomers have also been mounting heroic solar eclipse expeditions with observations carried out in some of the most remote corners of the globe to study gravity, magnetism and the sun's evolution. This fascinating array of techniques and creative ideas has allowed us to harness the scientific power of our closest stellar neighbour. For years astronomers imagined other stars like our sun potentially hosting other distant solar systems. In 1992 these imaginings became a reality. Alexander Walshazan and Dale Frail announced the first discovery of two exoplanets or planets orbiting another star. From this first discovery astronomers have gone on to detect thousands of exoplanets, refining their observational techniques and building new space telescopes specifically designed to find these tiny and distant stellar companions. Today teams of astronomers are working on discovering new exoplanets and exploring what new worlds might look like in planetary systems across the galaxy. Of course, studying distant planets also raises what may be the single most compelling question of all astronomy. Are we alone? The search for life in space is an ongoing and fascinating pursuit within astronomy, and one that raises fundamental questions about the universe, Earth and our nature as human beings. Astronomers like Vicky Meadows and Sarah Seeger have focused their efforts on the field of astrobiology, synthesising two fields to better understand how life could begin to flourish on distant worlds. Others, like Jill Tartar, have turned their efforts towards SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, in the hopes of detecting intelligent life on other planets. Exploding stars, gravitational waves, alien life. The astronomical mysteries of today and tomorrow ask big questions, and answering them will require big telescopes, big dreams, and a new generation of astronomical heroes. In the next decades, enormous new ground and space-based telescopes will begin operating. These facilities are set to change the face of astronomy offering new and powerful tools for observing nearby asteroids, strange stars and distant galaxies. Innovation in astronomy also requires thinking far ahead. Considering what the cutting-edge technology of the next century will mean for how we study the cosmos. Tomorrow's heroes of astronomy are already hard at work today imagining new telescopes that will be decades in the making and unveiling new discoveries that will shape our future picture of the universe. Many of these same scientists also work hard to educate the next generation of researchers and spark widespread interest in astronomy, ensuring that humanity can continue studying the universe in the years to come. At this point you are likely to have many questions about the discoveries and heroes you have heard about in this first programme. Who are the people that built telescopes for use on Earth and in space? And how are we using these telescopes today? Why did we need thousands of people on the team that detected the first gravitational waves? What might we expect to learn in the years and decades to come? 
During these programs, we'll be delving deep into many of the topics we've touched on today, learning about the science behind these discoveries, as well as the many different people and types of heroes that have shaped our view of the universe. <laughs>